Your prayers are answered! Zeus, the Lord of Heaven, has arrived! Zeus is going to pummel you down with a barrage of lightning bolts, and he doesn't even have to be near you to finish you off. You can't run from heaven, or the history of Zeus. Zeus is dedicated exclusively to bursting down his opponents with magical damage nukes, though he can provide vision and mini stuns when necessary. Zeus's first skill is Arc Lightning, which hurls a shot of electricity at a target that bounces to nearby enemies. It won't hit the same target twice, but it's on an extremely low cooldown with relatively low mana cost, so it's perfect for mild harass and early game last hitting. Next up is Lightning Bolt, which calls down a, uh, well... Lightning Bolt from the heavens, striking a single enemy for above average magic damage, and mini stunning the target while also providing unobstructed vision and true sight wherever it hits. This spell can also be cast on the ground without a target, striking the closest enemy hero within a small range. While Lightning Bolt's main purpose is to deal damage, it can also be used to cancel channeling spells, reveal invisible units, deward, or find pesky enemy heroes juking through the fog of war. Static Field is a passive ability that gives his other spells an extra bit of damage. Any targets affected by his spells also get a portion of their current health zapped away. This ability makes Zeus scary deep into the late game, where most nukers traditionally fall off. For added efficiency, the Static Field passive will proc before the spell damage, giving you the most bang for your buck. Zeus's ultimate is Thunder God's Wrath. This strikes every enemy hero on the map with lightning, regardless of where they are. This deals a moderate amount of magic damage, and also provides vision and true sight wherever the enemies were struck. It's an excellent tool for scouting the enemy team, or more realistically, stealing kills from the comfort of your fountain. Upon picking up an Aghanim Scepter, Zeus will gain the Nimbus ability. This creates a big storm cloud wherever you want on the map. Every few seconds, the Nimbus will cast Lightning Bolt, that's Zeus's second skill, on the closest enemy to the Nimbus Ward. Everything else from Lightning Bolt still applies. It'll provide vision, true sight, and a mini stun. It also deals damage based on the current level of Lightning Bolt, so if you don't have it leveled up when you cast Nimbus, this skill won't do any damage at all. Enemies can also destroy the Nimbus Ward for a pretty nice bounty, but that is absolutely easier said than done. The King of Gods stormed his way into Dota on April 8th, 2004 on patch 4.00. His model and responses are based off of Muradin Bronzebeard, a dwarf from the Bronzebeard clan in the Warcraft universe. However, his lore and abilities are based off of the Greek god of the same name. His original title was also the Lord of Olympia, in reference to the city in Greece where the ancient Olympic games were held. Since this hero's character relies on you knowing a thing or two about the god, I would suggest reading up on Edith Hamilton's mythology, Timeless Tales of Gods and Heroes, or uh, just play God of War I guess. That's, that's fine too. Upon his inception, Zeus was described as a melee hero specializing in lightning magics, which is kind of misleading. He actually looks like a ranged hero, but the range is just really short. In 5.55, this was updated to more accurately say, short range spellcasting hero, adept at damaging multiple enemies with his spells. In 6.00, Zeus's model was changed to Muradin under the effects of the Avatar spell. In other words, he's pretty much just whited out, looking more like a celestial figure than before. He also received new lore which reads, Punished for assisting the Sentinel in their mortal struggle, Zeus was exiled by the gods and stripped of much of his power. Even in his weakened form, his lightning attacks are nothing to trifle with. On a minor note, 6.41 updated Zeus's icon to the Avatar icon rather than keeping the Muradin one, just a small touch that kept the game's theming more consistent. To wrap things up, 6.49 upgraded the lore with a bunch of fancier words. Check it out. Once a deity of unfathomable might, Zeus reluctantly sacrificed his relished immortality in exchange to crush the sinister armies of the unholy undead. As his soul crossed into the mortal plane, his omnipotent powers withered greatly, yet not enough to quell this destructive thunder god's resolve for justice. Whew. Relax with the adjectives. They're like the junk food of creative writing. Zeus would also sometimes spawn with the fun nickname of Merlini, the legend himself. In addition to all of his contributions to the early days of competitive Dota, this clip of Merlini's triple kill as Zeus solidified him as an absolute god at the game. As a result, he was honored by Ice Frog by having his name cemented in the game. Unfortunately, Muradin's voice lines aren't anything to brag about, but one of his lines does appear in Base Hunter's Dota song. It's probably been a while since you last listened to it. Why don't you go queue it up for later? Let's get it on. This is the hottest anthem, spell a little Dota. Zeus's first set of skills came with a few differences from what we have today. He had Storm Bolt, which was a single target stun taken from the Mountain King hero. Lightning Bolt, which was supposed to be a simple nuke. However, as I was trying to capture footage for this, it looks like the spell just put creeps to sleep permanently. Can't even wake them up or anything. After a while, I had a nice slumber party going on. The spell started working fine in 5.40, although I do like the idea of Zeus inducing comas onto the puny mortals. 
Lightning Reflexes was a passive ability that would grant Zeus attack speed, and Wrath of Zeus was more or less the same as his current ultimate. I just want to point out that the name of Zeus's ultimate went through a few revisions. First, it was Wrath of Zeus, then in 5.80 it became Thunder God's Wrath. In 6.00, it became Wrath of the Thunder God, and then in Dota 2 it became Thunder God's Wrath again. For simplicity's sake, I will refer to it as Thunder God's Wrath. Speaking of which, his first Aghanim Scepter upgrade was introduced around 5.40, and it merely increased the damage of his ultimate, so this first version of Zeus was more of a single target assassin rather than a sustained nuker. But let's see what he has coming up. In 5.5, Stormbolt was replaced with a spell called Shock. This dealt a small amount of damage to an enemy, slows, and disarms them for up to 8 seconds. Pretty good amount of utility all in one spell, and bless the poor souls who were rendered helpless by it. In patch 5.55, Zeus had a slight rework, with Arc Lightning replacing Shock, and an active version of Static Field replacing Lightning Reflexes. This would instantly zap all nearby units for 15% of their current health for the cost of 12 mana with no cooldown. This spell would make Zeus a magic version of Bristleback, allowing you to run in and spam the spell to peel down your opponent's health for practically nothing. Since the spell didn't have a cooldown, it was incredibly annoying to deal with and difficult to play around. In 5.58, the Thunderlord's attack range was increased to actually be ranged, because honestly, why even use a hammer when you can shoot literal beams of energy out of your hands? Another major change wouldn't occur until 6.28, where Static Field was reworked. In this version, the ability would become a passive, shocking all nearby heroes for a percentage of their current health whenever Zeus casts a spell. In 6.60, Arc Lightning could be cast while another one was still bouncing around. Considering that it could bounce 15 times at level 4, this was a nice quality of life update, although the cooldown was increased. In this patch, Lightning Bolt also became fully blocked by Lincoln Sphere, instead of just the mini stun, making the interaction more consistent overall. To wrap things up here, 6.73 made static field effects creeps, invisible units, and units in the fog. Not that this could ever finish anyone off, but being able to shock everything around you rather than just visible enemy heroes made Zeus command a much more threatening presence on the battlefield. Heroes of New Earth gave us an interesting take of Zeus in the whimsical ape known as Thunderbringer in April 2009. Thunderbringer started out as a direct port, but he's had some changes that made him distinct from Zeus, and dare I say, a little better? His first skill is Chain Lightning, which is essentially just Arc Lightning. Blast of Lightning is identical to Lightning Bolt, with the added effect of granting a burst of movement speed when you cast it on an ally, letting him take on a more support role if need be. Lightning Rod zaps enemies for their current health every time Thunderbringer casts a spell, and Lightning Storm is his ultimate, acting similarly to Thunder God's Wrath. Now his Staff of the Master's upgrade is where this gets interesting. This gives him the choice between two different ultimates, and they're toggled using his third skill. He keeps Lightning Storm and can switch to Thunderstorm, which summons a Thundercloud anywhere on the map that lasts for a short duration, and zaps all enemy units in the area. Like I said, it's an interesting way to implement the spell, most likely due to the engine limitations in Han. As a team fighting tool, this is much stronger than Zeus's Nimbus, but it doesn't last nearly as long. In the end, it's not better or worse, just different. But overall, I think Thunderbringer is a fun take on the Lord of Olympia. Like many others before him, Thunderbringer has an alternate avatar that looks kinda like Muradin if you really miss him that much. Despite being a fairly basic spellcaster, Zeus's ultimate is so iconic that its influence can be seen in the development of characters in other MOBAs. In League of Legends, Karthus the Deathsinger brings down the pain with his ultimate, Requiem. Since it is a channeling ability, enemy champions have an opportunity to counterplay either through Azonias or gaining a shield of some sort. Although the enemy can sneak their way out of it, for the opponents who can't, that feeling of dread coming from them is simply exquisite. For a more spammy spell user, Ryze has you covered. He throws out his spells in quick succession, and he's functionally very close to Zeus. In Smite, you have a mix between Nu Wa and, ha, <laughs> wouldn't you know it, Zeus! Nu Wa has the classic Zeus ultimate called Fire Shards, where she strikes every enemy on the map and gains vision of them. Smite's version of Zeus is a bit more grounded. He has Chain Lightning as a spell, and he also has the power to summon a lightning storm that hits all enemies in an area. Vainglory has Varya, whose ultimate, Anvil's Hammer, strikes every enemy on the map with several lightning bolts. She also has various lightning-based abilities, although she seems more like a mobile assassin rather than a basic nuker. Finally, I just want to briefly mention Muradin from Heroes of the Storm. He doesn't really align with Zeus's playstyle, but you can pick him, choose Avatar as your heroic ability, and there you go! You kinda have Zeus, I guess! Zeus was first revealed to the world in Dota 2 during the International 1 in August 2011. He had a subtle change in his title, going from the Lord of Olympia to Lord of Heaven, and if I had to wager a guess, it just sounds cooler. In his first model, he didn't look too serious. In fact, some people even went as far as comparing him to Mario. You know, because of the height and curly mustache. And jeez, have you seen his beta icon? He's got less polygons than Super Meat Boy. 
This comparison was made much more apt when the Heavenly Jump item was released, giving him a Mario-style hop, having a bright gold coin come out, and playing an 8-bit jumping sound to go along with it. During TI5, Zeus won an Arcana Showdown against Queen of Pain, and on December 16th, 2015, he received the Tempest Helm of the Thunder God item, as well as a brand new model to show it off on. Good god, he is so jacked! It looks like he injected lightning bolts directly into his veins. Thankfully, this was toned down in his actual release. Zeus's motivation for fighting is much less noble than his original Dota backstory, but it is closer to the actual Zeus in Greek mythology. He was caught a countless number of times sleeping with mortal women, so his wife gave him an ultimatum. She took away his immortality, and would only allow him back once he proved his faithfulness. He now joins the battle in order to prove his worth, and hopefully regain his holy status. The story alone doesn't do his personality much justice, as he aggressively gives off an arrogant vibe in his responses. Big kudos goes to Eric Newsom for adding such a fun flavor to the character. God's gift to the world, me. Yes, I am holier than thou. But I am expected to pay for these items? The Tempest Revelation Immortal somewhat advances Zeus's character art, as it explains how his impulses once again got the better of his oath, showing that he hasn't remained entirely faithful to his wife. Not that it's going to stop him anyway, since he can gain access to his old arsenal and restore his former glory that way. Zeus also makes an appearance in the Sundered Moon comic, which was released the same time as his Arcana. He can be seen at the tavern's bar, unsuccessfully hitting on Medusa. The comic portrays him as a skeezy creep who talks way too much about himself, and it even references a story of him turning into a swan to seduce a woman. From what we've seen so far, it doesn't look like Zeus's wife is ever gonna take him back. He ends up speaking with Ark Warden, who recruits the god to join his army in taking down the Ancients. As a persuasion tactic, Ark Warden returns Zeus to a fragment of his true power, and grants him the Tempest Helm of the Thunder God Arcana. And of course, Zeus tries to buy Ark Warden a drink so he can continue doing what he does best, talk about himself. The Electric Deity can also be found in Artifact as a Blue Hero, where he feels very familiar to his Dota counterpart. He has Static Field as a passive ability, which deals one piercing damage to his enemy neighbors every time you cast a blue spell, and he takes Thunder God's Wrath as a signature card, which deals four piercing damage to each enemy hero in all of the lanes. Unlike the personality traits that we've seen him display before, Zeus's entire incentive to join the battle here is to teach Storm Spirit a lesson. Storm Spirit claims that Zeus isn't the god of thunder, because Raijin himself is the embodiment of thunder, and he bows to no man. From Zeus's side of the story, he's there to prove that there is no god of lightning above him, more of their rivalry can be found in various cards such as Rolling Storm, Lightning Strike, Thunderstorm, and Bolt of Damocles. In all of these cards, it seems like they're in a big pissing contest to see who's the stronger one between them, performing grand gestures to intimidate one another. Truly a rivalry greater than Goku and Vegeta, Sub-Zero and Scorpion, the Devil Bats and the White Knights if they were separated into enough people to form two fully functioning football teams. Zeus as a hero had very significant upgrades to his skills that progressively made him more of a nightmare to deal with. In 6.81, Lightning Bolt could be cast on the ground. This opened up the pathway for Zeus to become a living sentry ward, an amazing buff that makes warding against Zeus an absolute chore. In 6.86, Zeus gained two indirect buffs with the introduction of Aether Lens and the Arcane Rune. At the time, Aether Lens increased spell damage, cast range, and magic resistance, so it gave him everything he needed to take everyone to the SmackDown Hotel. Arcane Rune just made everything easier for him in lane, and may the lord have mercy on your soul if he got one in the late game. In 6.87, Static Field's damage type was changed to HP removal, so it wouldn't disable Blink Dagger or consumables. In 7.00, Zeus gained a new Aghanim Scepter effect, replacing the damage upgrade on Thunder God's Wrath to granting him Nimbus. Notably, the Lightning Bolt interval was affected by cooldown reductions, and yes, that is terrifying to think about. Luckily, to keep this balance in check, Zeus's first set of talents were pretty boring, as they only affected stats outside of the level 25 talent that increased Static Field's Zap. In 7.06, a level 20 talent was replaced with one that increased Lightning Bolt's mini stun to 0.5 seconds, which could keep enemies stun locked if you laid down a Venn diagram of Nimbuses and cast Lightning Bolt whenever you get the chance. In 7.07, .07, his talents were refined and now they're actually interesting. All of the picks seem situational and really depend on the game you're playing, which is how I think all talent trees should be. In 7.08, Zeus had an overwhelming 58% win rate, which could be attributed to a number of factors. The reworked mana regen formula from 7.07 .07 made his sustain in lane much nicer. Wards only needed two auto attacks to destroy, which made it easier for Zeus to deward, and other popular mid laners getting nerfed made him stand out much more. After a long stretch of time with minor changes, 7.20 made Nimbus's Lightning Bolt Interval no longer affected by cooldown reductions, meaning that it only strikes every 2.5 seconds now. Finally, in 7.21, Static Fields was reworked, and it only affects enemies directly damaged by your abilities, instead of working in an AoE. 
Although this sounds like a nerf in laning and teamfighting scenarios, this also means that Nimbus and Thunder God's Wrath can apply it to enemies without Zeus having to be near them. And to be quite frank, anything that buffs kill stealing is worth the price. Zeus is a mean little guy who's not afraid to take what he wants. With his array of spammable nukes, he'll have you burn to a crisp and send you straight to the depths of Hades. Just when an enemy gets away with a sliver of health, all it takes is for you to press R on your keyboard to make your enemy shout out, Oh my god. I'm Dennis the Tall, and that was the history of Zeus. We're at the end once again. Let me take this moment to say thank you to Simon Yakushev for his pledge on my Patreon. He didn't request the drawing of his avatar, so here's something I whipped up so we can attach a face to the name. What a majestic creature. Also wanted to say what's up, and thank you so much to Nate Cummings. I hope you'll be coming back to more Dotaology in the future. In the last episode, I should have expected this, but a whole bunch of you just spammed nicks. That's why I love you guys. I couldn't ask for a better community. Anyway, that's it for this one. Follow me on the Twitter, support the channel on Patreon, click all the doodads, and you know what? Here's a picture of Dazzle since you guys haven't seen him in a while. It's almost a year since I've had him, and honestly, he's only getting smellier and rattier every day. But hey, love makes you put up with weird stuff. That's all I've got, so have a good one, and take care.